Hello and welcome back to Matrix Tech Talk. Today we're going to talk about a T-shaped engineer. A T-shaped engineer is a person who has the broad overview, high level overview. At the same time, they're able to go deep into the technology at the code level and they're able to explain things. So today to ask me questions about T-shaped engineers and their qualities, we have two colleagues, Dorina and Monia, who are going to ask me questions. So Dorina and Monia, welcome to Matrix Tech Talk. And uh, off you go, shoot your questions. How would you define a T-shaped engineer? Great question. How would I define a T-shaped engineer? So, like I said, a T-shaped engineer is someone who is present at various level of the development cycle. And they're good communicators at the very, very technical level, at the code level, they're good communicators at the architectural level, requirement level, and at the same time, when there is a big picture they have to paint, they can go broad. So they can go as broad as it needs to, they can go as deep as it, it needs to whenever they're talking, depending on the context. So in which level they will be speaking, it depends on the context. Now the question that may come is why is it important? Because communication is an underrated topic in engineering. Engineering is about communication. Engineering is not only about your ingenuity and you invent, you solve problems. It is about solving problems. But if you cannot communicate, it's hard to engineer something. So today in 21st century, no single person can make a product. If you look at this mouse that we have, that I have on this table, there is not a single person on this planet Earth who can say that I can make a mouse by myself. 10,000 years ago, there are tools we were using. One single person could go and craft the tools, uh, taking stones from nature and use it. We hardly have any such tools that we use. To, the tools got so complex. There's not a single person who can craft it. There's not a single company who can make a mouse without external suppliers. And it is not an exaggeration to say there is not a single country without depending on the global supply chain will be able to make a mouse. And when it comes to automotive, behind one vehicle, we have about 3000 companies, global companies. So we're living in an era of very complex supply chain and communication is really the foundation of putting all these blocks together. And communication from the very top level where you have the big picture and all the way down to the bits and pieces is what a T-shaped engineer is good at. So then what would you say? Is it also valid for other topics? Absolutely. Uh, we're talking about engineering, but let's talk about our sales process, for example. Here you also need the entire understanding in a T-shaped manner. When you're talking about your strategic goals, you want to draw the big picture. You want to abstract the details out. You don't want to talk about the CRM system that you're using. You don't want to talk about the creatives that you're using, but you're talking about the strategy. And as you go deeper in different levels of the process, you got to go also in also more details about that topic. And that is, again, T-shaped. Very good question. Yeah. Is empathy also uh, important and uh, how is it relevant for the T-shaped engineer? Like I said, a T-shaped engineer will have to have certain qualities. Communication was one of them. The second bit, actually this is, this is more of a complementary part of communication, is to understand the counterpart. Oftentimes, a lot of people who can talk a lot, they say, oh, I'm very communicative. No, you're not. Communication is not only about talking. It's also about listening, talking, listening, and finally, understanding slash, which is a better way to put it, empathizing with the counterpart. Now, Chris Voss is a fantastic term for this. So he's a former FBI hostage negotiator. So how can you even empathize with a terrorist when you're negotiating? So he uses this term called tactical empathy. 
Meaning you don't have to agree with his ideology, you don't have to agree with his argument, but to understand his emotion, to understand what he's trying to say is very important. And again, in communication, emotion is again a very underrated aspect because understanding the emotion in communication is very important. Often in engineering table, we are talking about a certain thing and people are totally ignoring the emotions of the counterpart. Empathy bit is totally missing and we're not able to reach any conclusion. So that is a big problem. So Hazan, would you say that an each person could be a T-shaped engineer? That is a very good question. If each person can become a T-shaped engineer, that's, that's your question. Yeah. Theoretically, yes. Um, I have seen brilliant engineers who are really good at problem solving. Engineering is about problem solving, creating product, you know, ingenuity, creativity. They're really good at uh, what they do. However, when you have to communicate with them, you have to dial down to their level the, in their frequency. And it's really hard for them to see big pictures. So in theory, I do not believe in any limitation of any human being, but in practice, I have seen people who simply do not want to or do not navigate the territory b besides what they're good at, which is problem solving. Now, the problem with this kind of people is they don't fit in a larger ecosystem. Companies often keep them because they're extremely productive, but to me, if they do not fit in the larger ecosystem, this individual is to me irrelevant because no matter how much of a genius you are on your own in today's world, if you do not fit in the big ecosystem where for which you need communication, you need empathy, you need abstraction, and you need to navigate in different levels of technicality, you have to see who you're talking to. Are you talking to a developer? Are you talking to a senior developer? Are you talking to an architect? Are you talking to a mid-level manager? Are you talking to the top management? Depending on these levels, you'll have to dial down to their frequency. If you don't, maybe individually you will be performing well solving problems, but in the larger equation, you will be creating more damage than good. That's my opinion and that's why you know, fitting into the ecosystem is really important and communication is the key. So that you would say it's not easy for a business to find the right person for T-shaped engineers? This is the difficulty we're facing all the time to find T-shaped engineers uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the larger space. In general, people, when we interview, there is a delta between their actual capability that we can assess through series of technical interviews, behavioral interviews, and their self-awareness about them. People say that they're very communicative. However, the communication criteria that I just mentioned, you know, listening, to be able to empathize, to be able to build rapport, and obviously, you know, being T-shaped, navigating in different levels of abstraction, is not there, but he is thinking that he is communicator, probably because he can talk. You know, talking only is only one side of the equation in communication. Often people forget that. I've seen salespeople who think they're very communicative and they talk, talk, talk. Sales is more about listening than talking. Yeah. So would you say each company needs a T-shaped engineers who also has the possibility to um, be the middleman of a company between the engineers and the customers or? It's a great question. I think up to a certain extent, all the team members have to be T-shaped in their territory. Now, the interface between the customer and the technical team will definitely also be a T-shaped engineer who has the deep understanding and also he can abstract out everything when he has to talk in a big picture, in a broader scope, the idea that one single person can solve this problem who has the ability to talk to people and the rest, even if they're just nerds, just focusing on, 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 their, on their own thing, that might work, but the, the larger your, your organization gets, the more complex 
it becomes. And it is all about the big picture. If one individual is not communicating well, this is going to hurt the entire process. So you think that communication is the most important skill that a T-shaped engineer should have? And yes. Yeah. And empathy? Yes. Communication, empathy, and leadership. These three things will let you thrive. Without these three things, um, it's not only engineers. You know, if you cannot communicate, no matter how good you are, you're not fit in in the ecosystem. If you cannot communicate, right? You have to be able to communicate to your direct report. You have to communicate to your colleagues. You have to communicate to your uh, subordinates, people who reports to you. So it's like omnidirectional communication. And you have to always talk in different frequencies, in different levels of abstraction, depending on who you're talking to. If you're talking to your direct report, if you're talking to your colleagues, if you're talking to your people who reports to you. Now, communication and empathy, they, I believe they go hand in hand. If you can empathize, you'll be able to communicate better. And that is really the key aspect. Now, the third thing I just mentioned, which is leadership. Leadership and being in management position are two different things. If you are a manager, you've got a title. And if you have the title, people will have to listen to you because that's their job, right? But that's not leader. You, can't, you don't need a title to become a leader. If you are a leader, you have, if you have natural leadership ability, then you can drive people in a, in a way which is good for them, good for the company, good for the organization as a whole. And that's, that's how leadership is important because these are the kind of people who will, who a company will need uh, in the long run for the company to flourish. So this was about T-shaped engineers and their um, relevant, their necessity in a company and how, what are the qualities a T-shaped engineer should have in a company, in an engineering team. If you have questions, comments, remarks, I would love you to write in the comment section. And if you've got some values from this video, please smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification icon so that you get notified each time we publish a new video. Thank you so much for being with us. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching our video. Please click the link below to schedule a free consulting call with us if you need any help regarding the topic of the video. One of our staffs will get in touch with you and would be happy to schedule a free consulting call with you and happy to help you in any of these topics. Please click the link below now and we'll see you in the call.